Welcome to the video about my first guitar project that I call the Maiton Flamingo Tribute. Here is a mock-up of how I originally found and cloned the shape of the guitar I wanted to build. I found a front-on picture of the Maiton Flamingo, I found the center line, sized it right, and you basically print out a template to get started. Here is a flashback to when I created the template for the first guitar as a practice. I am showing this in case you don't watch the series on the practice body I built out of cheap pine and plywood. Marking and cutting the neck pocket template is important. It has to be centered, straight and the right size. I find that MDF is the perfect templating material as it is easy to shape accurately. For the neck route, this template was too thin, so I transferred the cut across to this thicker MDF so the router had enough clearance from the body. As the shortest router bit I had was 25mm long, if I had a thin template, the route for the pocket would be too deep. What this means is that if the correct depth was set, the guide bearing on the router bit would be riding so high that it would not even be touching the template. And if this is the case, all you've got is blade touching template and the body. There would be no guidance happening at all. I made a modification to the shape of the guitar body just under the neck so there would be slightly more space for the player's hand when reaching for the higher frets. I ordered this body blank through eBay. It was from a local supplier of guitar building products such as wood that is ready to be used to make electric or acoustic guitars. The wood I ordered is called Queensland Maple and I felt this was perfect because I live in the state of Queensland and this is an Australian design guitar that I was replicating. I trusted that the blank was thickened correctly from the manufacturer, so I did not bother checking it was a perfectly square face and back. Due to the size of the guitar body offset, I had to raise the center line so the lower side would fit on the blank. Cutting out the rough shape of the body took around 45 minutes, I had to buy an extra long jigsaw blade to cut these bodies, and it is suitable for cutting wood, but due to the thickness, it only cut approximately 1.5 centimeters per minute. This video is sped up many times to appear this fast. I left around five millimeters to one centimeter outside the final shape line in case the blade bent, angled off the 90 degrees, and cut into the body line and ruin the shape. To put it technically, if I rode right up against the cutting line and there was any variance in the angle of the blade, the lower side of the blade could be cutting on the inside of the cutting line. That would be disastrous and render the purpose of the template useless. Here is the roughed out body blank ready to be routed to the template. To avoid leaving random holes on the body, I used the pick guard template to select locations where I could insert nails where the wood would later be routed away or covered up. I felt nails would be better to hold the template in place than two sided tape. I just inserted a shot of what this flush trim bit looks like with the guide bearing at the top.
As this is a harder wood than pine, I use the router to slowly trim away excess material rather than rip straight into the template line. With the confidence of having completed the practice build and already having the templates created and tested, I was able to complete 90% of the bodywork in just one day. Considering that on the second day all I had to do was complete the depth routing for the pickups and the pick guard, you could say that I completed the majority of the bodywork in around a total of 12 hours. In the end, it's not a race, I'm just pointing out the efficiency and the use of good templates. Please excuse some of the bad camera angles in some of this run of routing work. I guess I was more focused on getting the work done properly than making sure the camera was in the best location every step of the way. If you do end up botching both body builds, you will catch this process in all the angles you would need to see. Once the top third of the body is shaped perfectly to the template, I use that first cut to route the remainder of the sides flush. In the first build, I shaped the sides with two rounds of the body. For this body, and as the wood was slightly harder than pine, I took the sides back in three steps to give the router a bit of an easy run. The main challenge when running the router around the body is keeping the face of the router flush to the face of the guitar body. If the router were to droop off the side of the body, the bit could gouge into the side, which could take away material that could not be put back. The only way to recover would be to use some wood filler product to replace the material, but that would look terrible on a guitar that you were not looking to paint a solid colour. Alternatively reshape the body to make up for the loss in material and end up with a different shape than what you originally intended.
You can see a little bit of router burn there, but nothing that the natural amount of sanding would take away anyway. The neck pocket on the practice body ended up being loose because I removed and reset the template position before finishing the route, and this turned out being just a hair off line. So to overcompensate on this time around, I added two layers of tape to the inside of the templates, so this routes out less of a gap and makes for a tighter fit. To completely avoid making that mistake again, I was also not going to remove the template until the route would be complete. And adding tape might have been overkill, but you can always make a neck pocket wider, you can't make it smaller. I only take away the material in the neck pocket at around 4 to 5 millimeters of depth at a time. I had already set the stop bit to the final depth of 14 millimeters and creeped up on it. On the first two passes, I am not routing all the way to the sides of the template because the bearing is not yet low enough to be guided by the template, and if I went close enough, the blade would actually make contact and start tearing into the template and render it useless. This looks like the last pass, and the bearing would be low enough and you will see me running the bearing along the template to guide it. I was running the bit around the template a few extra times, making sure the cut was flush with the template and that I have not missed removing any material in the neck pocket. The router bit has a 12 to 14 millimeter diameter. No, it's not changeable. I just can't remember exactly how big it is. So it would not fit into the corners of the route pocket. I used the chisel to cut away the excess material in the corners to fit the neck all the way in.
like a glove. The neck fit like a glove. Being that the neck pocket is only 14 millimeters and the neck screws have to go through more of this body than on a strat, there is only around 12 to 14 millimeters of the screw tip entering the neck to hold it on. But I have not yet found any issues with this. The roundover bit is a 12mm radius, as I believed that the standard Stratocaster roundover was this size. However, my Mexican Stratocaster does not have such rounded edges, so it makes me wonder if my sources were incorrect. In the end, I am not sure why there are different roundovers out there, but I felt that this roundover did suit this shape of body regardless, and I was happy with it. The main problem you can run into when cutting with a roundover bit like this is that if it is not set within a specific tolerance of height, you will end up with a line created by the inside edge of the radius. I think that you can see that I have just the slightest line running around on the back of the body, but I noticed this and increased the height by a few microns to prevent that from happening on the front. As long as it is only slight, it is something that can be cleared up easily with the natural amount of sanding you would need to do. There is a tolerance that you need to meet in the middle, so it doesn't look like you cut away too little or too much. When I saw the guitar with the round over on the back and the square edge on the front, I nearly changed my mind. But I felt I had to stick to the plan and felt that I had to round over both sides. Also, I'm not ready to install binding just yet. Maybe I'll try adding binding when I build a Les Paul tribute. I am using one of those non-slip rubber mats under the body to prevent movement while routing. With a clean bench and body when you start, it does a good job and it did not let the body move much at all under the weight and pressure of the router. With the sides and the neck pocket done, I started the route for the pickup cavities and where the electrics would go under the pick guard. I used the old router bit that came with the second hand router as it was a bit dull and only a quarter inch sized bit, so there would be little chance of it grabbing into the wood, losing control and have it rip into where I didn't want to go. I immediately dealt with that rough bird that was left after the first pass, so the bit could not tear them out any further. I 
I stuck to my routing method of cutting down layers like you would dig a hole for a swimming pool, and that is to dig down to the depth required and then carve the shape of the sides. As with the neck, I would only route down 5mm at a time until I reached the depth I required in that location. Once at depth, I would clean up the sides and trim back to the lines that I had drawn on the face of the body. Now that is as much routing as I felt I could complete at the end of a long day. This was around the 10 hour mark and I felt a bit fatigued and did not want to make any mistakes by continuing. At this point the most productive thing I could do is go to sleep. I planned the socket for the jack plate in a similar place as where one would be on a strat. The Mate and Flamingo jack was originally a 90 degree socket in the pit guard, but since I had so many pots to install there, I felt the strat jack would be more suitable on the outside of the pit guard. I found an alignment that followed the line of the existing pit guard to make it look as natural as possible on this body. This would be the next day, continuing with the route to reach the right depth for the pots and the electrics. The design I came up with has one tone and three volume knobs, so as there would be no switch I did not have to route down any further than the depth of the pots. When I had to wire up a second pick guard for the original Flamingo practice build I made first, I changed the wiring to a standard strat configuration including a switch because this wiring simply did not work effectively on that one. Lately I've been thinking back on why the 4 volume 1 tone wiring did not work when it did on the first harness. I think I made one crucial mistake when replicating it, but in the end could have been because of all the crappy pots I was using. So the guide for this routing was pencil marks that I drew on the front of the body. I planned enough space between the cavity and the edge of the pick guard as I felt required. I made sure to leave extra material for where any screws would be located for the pick guard. I could have made the route more specific to where the pots are located, but a bigger cavity leaves more room for alternative options later on without having to reroute. The depth I was routing for the P90 was 14mm, the depth for the single coil in the middle was 25 and the humbucker was 25 with 30mm in the areas where the pickup height adjustment screws would be. The screws for the humbucker would reach lower into the body because the original pickup rings would hold the screw higher.
cut out a lot of footage of the routing of the jack plate cavity because my hands were obscuring the view of what was happening. I moved the camera for this section where I had to route deeper so the inserted cable jack would have enough room in the far end to sit naturally and not be obstructed. I'm really glad that I tested this before I moved on, otherwise the cable would have fallen out of the socket constantly. Here I am increasing the depth for the pickup height adjustment screws on the humbucker, as mentioned before, and I also deepened the single coil screw locations. I trimmed up the edge of the P90 socket as this was designed to fit snug and it would even stay in place without being screwed down to the body. I have since bought screws to hold the P90 down but as yet have not found the need to install them. I drilled the screw holes for the strap buttons, but to this day I have still not installed any. I did this so that I did not have to drill the body after the clear coat was applied, in case of tear out that can get caught under the edge of the nearby coating and lift it up. I bought an extra long drill with a suitable thickness to drill wire holes between cavities. One hole through to the bridge mount socket for the grounding wire and two through to the jack plate for the output. The extra length of the drill bit is required because of the low angles of the holes that need to be drilled from cavity to cavity and keep the drill clear of the body.
I am using my steel ruler as a protector of the edges of the body at risk of being hit by the drill bit. I actually brushed the drill chuck up against the body there, and I know I should have taken a little bit more precaution, but luckily I only left an unnoticeable indent, if any. At every huge milestone I like to proudly display the progress I have made, and in this instance proving that the holes that I have cut are definitely holes. So far the work you have seen took around 12 hours and thanks to the use of templates the bodywork is almost complete. Sanding and some drilling for pickguard screws would be required later, but all the tricky stuff is done.